welcome back to the show. Today's episode is just a short 10 minute introduction for those who are brand new to surfing. This is a little mini interview with Clayton. Clayton and I just wanted to give some tips to those absolute beginners. So this is just some tips and perspectives for the first sort of five hours of your surfing life. If you know anyone who's looking at starting out or who maybe has already started out but got off on the wrong foot, learned a few bad habits, please share this episode with them. If you have any more questions as a beginner, please let us know. Mike at surfmastery.com So many requests about like what do I do to start surfing? How do I start surfing? There's a lot of beginners that go out there and they go to a local surf school and they they get what's what I call it a, a tourist experience. Yeah, and they sort they're, they're somewhat aware that it's a tourist experience, and then they want to know. Well, actually, I, I really like surfing, and I bought a board, and I want to get into it. Their friend surfs as well, maybe their kids surf as well, and they've decided, okay, I'm going to give this surfing thing a proper crack. And most likely, they've gone out and bought a a nine foot soft top. First of all, is it? I mean, is that what you recommend to buy? First of all, let's go with that surfboard well, choice. Probably. The reason being, you're not going to know maintenance. So, in other words, I see so many guys dropping boards in showers. They, they're not used to the length of the board, so it gets smashed on the tailgate when you close in the car. There's all these little things. So, if you had a hard top, you'd probably destroy it in no time. So, a soft top kind of, it's, it's going to last a lot longer. Plus, because you're a beginner, you're making loads of mistakes. So, if you fall on the board... You're not going to hurt yourself and you probably won't ding the board. So, great choice. However, there comes a time when in order for you to progress, you need to jump off that board. And there's another learning phase that you go through whereby you, your body needs to learn how to paddle better. You need to get stronger. There's certain postures you have to adopt in surfing. Um, and if you stay too much time on a long board you'll pick up more bad habits and you won't learn all those little nuances like how to arch your back when you're paddling, um, how to duck dive correctly, where to sit to catch a wave. Um, There's all those next level learning things that too much volume will rob you from. I mean, I still love surfing my nine foot soft top sometimes. So I, I always encourage beginners, buy that board, buy that nine or eight foot soft top because it'll come in handy when you want, when the waves are really small or you just want to go out and have some fun with your kids or whatever. It's a board you'll keep forever. Yeah, when you've, when you've mastered a certain level of surfing, it's easy to go back and ride all those bigger, fun boards. And the great thing is when you ride them, immediately you have no expectations on yourself other than this is going to be fun. I'm going to get a heap of waves. Um, you get to feel the waves. You get to play. But sometimes when you ride high performance boards, you go out there with really high expectations and you get frustrated when you can't meet those expectations. Hmm. But okay, so let's say someones they've gone out and they've bought a nine foot soft top. They've only had an hour in the water. Yep. They know, they know how to catch the whitewash and stand up straight away because that's what they learned at their tourist experience. What, but now they've decided, hey, no, I'm going I'm to commit 20 hours to this. What should the what should the first hour of them let's let's start with I mean how how do they choose the right beach to go to first of all? Pretty much any beach where there is a lot of flat sand means the energy is going to be kind of dissipated earlier as it rolls in, and it's just going to give you a longer length of ride. Anywhere and so basically a really good cue you need to see once the way is broken. It needs to be at least 50 meters, maybe 100 meters of white water. But um, if there's a very steep beach and the waves kind of suck up really heavy and break, the water's almost going down and around and you won't get a long stretch of white water. So for the beginners, the more white water you see pretty much means the longer the ride is. The, the shorter it is, it's going to be a lot more violent and you kind of don't want to get pushed down, roughed up, come up and have like a, a bad experience. So again, anywhere that you could probably walk out, maybe knee deep or waist deep, and almost 
push and jump on your board um, is going to be fantastic. The reason being, um, your legs initially will be stronger than the arms. So if you can walk back, you're going to save your arms. Until such time, your, your paddling gets stronger, in which time you're probably going to jump onto a shorter board and want to go surf out the back. Okay, great. So they've chosen a, a flat sand beach that has a, a decent length of white wash yes most likely probably even the same beach that they had their tourist experience at but just down the just walk down the beach away from them for so, a little so bit they'll be comfortable um, there they'll probably keep returning to yeah. where they feel comfortable yeah and then you mentioned uh, using your legs to jump to catch the wave is that a technique you recommend for yep so pretty much when the wave comes you almost want to jump at the same time as the wave a lot of people start paddling too early and they don't have good technique and the wave kind of washes over them there's this little experiment that we've done in Ombi and we've, we've posted a couple of times. And what it is, if, if you put a sandbag on the back of the board, all right, so the nose sticks up, when the wave comes, it will push the board forward. If you put the sandbag on the front of the board, it almost dips in at nose dives and flips. So it sounds weird, but when you're paddling in, if you lean back a little bit and arch your back, the wave will catch you. And we, we try to encourage beginners to use the right technique whereby it's easy to catch waves and you don't get fatigued but that does require some arching of the back and and some back muscles and some strength so on the back of that when beginners go surfing they've got a a far out amount of energy before they get gassed out because you're literally going up against the ocean so what I suggest is try to catch as many waves in as short a space as possible because I see so many beginners that they try to paddle all the way out the back and by the time they get out the back they're absolutely gassed and they lie flat on their board and they get washed almost out of position and they spend half an hour out there feeling really uncomfortable how do I get back in they're too embarrassed to ask people what should I do they're getting in the way people are screaming at them and shouting at them Um, so the and that starts to affect you mentally and physically. Um, so the best thing to do is, as you walk out, probably within the first two to three minutes, spin around and get a foamy. And then if you're tired, just wait on the beach until you get your energy back. And then as quick as you can, into the water, turn around and get another one. If you're gassed, you want to be sitting on the beach. Um, and then when you do enter in the water, get your job done, get your wave done, and try to get back to the beach as quickly as you can. The, the quicker you do that, the more you learn and it builds confidence. It also builds stamina and it builds strength. And you'll find by getting waves more quicker, you get used to going out in the water and expecting to get more waves. The worst thing a person could do is go out there and kind of stew on their own thoughts and start overthinking issues. You only really have to walk out to waist deep water and catch a, a bit of white water and you don't have to paddle for it you just have to get the timing right yep it's all about timing which will actually teach you to read the ocean uh, better anyway in yep. the long run and what's is the, what's the goal do you think for the absolute beginner is it to well, once they've once they've walked out they've jumped and they've caught the wave they're trimming along with the white wash is it to stand up or is it to as quickly as they can, what, what's, what's, what should they be think, trying to do? So if you think about an aeroplane, um, in taxi, the aeroplane starts speeding up and only when it gets enough speed does it actually start to take off. And if you're teaching a kid how to ride a bicycle, at a certain speed, the bicycle stabilizes. So generally, if you're going to catch foam, the first, <laughs> it's doing this. So you kind of want to brace, arch your back and let the wave push you. And then there'll be a, part of that wave where you start moving with the wave and you start to stabilize that's the time you want to stand up and then when you stand up you're standing up with the intention of going somewhere so a lot of people pop up and try to balance and look at their board so i'll give you an analogy have you ever caught a bus and the bus is loading passages and you're not paying attention and the bus pulls off and whoa and you, you almost fall over backwards Okay? Mm-hmm. And then you catch the next bus and you're like, oh, I got caught out. So you're paying attention. As the bus pulls off, you lightly just lean forward 
and you kind of move with the bus and you don't fall over. So the problem with beginners is they're standing and they don't anticipate the speed at what they're going to travel or where they're going and they end up falling off. Now, if they caught that wave and looked where they want to go and stand up with the intention of traveling there, the same way you stand up in a bus and just lean forward a little bit, you'll find that they travel there effortlessly. The balance is going to be better um, because now they're thinking about moving and they're not thinking about standing. So there's a big difference there. Hmm. Okay. So I like that. So choose, choose a decent sized foam board, choose the right beach with flat sand and the goal is to catch the white water with timing, not in not too deep a water, with timing rather than paddling, and just take your time. Wait till you wait till the that initial bam of the wave. There's no rush to, to pop up, and when you do stand up, look where you're going. Yep. All right, Clayton. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Michael. Till next time. Thank you for tuning in. You can find out more about Clayton and what he does through his website, Ombi, O-M-B-E. There are links to that website in the show notes. There are also links to previous episodes that I have done with Clayton in the past to find out more. And welcome to the sport of surfing. It's a challenging one, but it is a very rewarding one. And uh, please note that every single episode of this podcast is standalone so you can go back through the catalog as a beginner and dive in and if you have any specific questions please reach out mike at surfmastery.com